Hello everyone, welcome to Apti Plus Academy for Civil Services. This is a video on daily news and editorial analysis, which I'll be covering from the Hindu and Indian Express. So the most important news and editorial of the day that is relevant for your examination will be discussed in this session. Let's get started with news topic list. Today is 5th of July. The first news is India leading in the world in terms of digital revolution. This is what the Prime Minister has said. Second, government ordered no service charges by default from the restaurant and hotels. Third, center steps to tackle the rupees volatility. We have seen the price of the rupees in term comparison to the US dollar. We'll see the detail. Fourth, the center committed to the fiscal deficit target of 6.4%. And the last is an editorial, the problem with our university visions. Right? Apart from the news and editorial discussion at the end of this video, there will be MCQ based questions. These questions will be based on current affairs that will help you for the upcoming prelims examination. So without any further delay, let's get started. And if you are new to our channel, do not forget to subscribe to Apti Plus Academy for Civil Services on YouTube. If you like this video, if you find this video informative and helpful, do not forget to press the like button. So starting with the first news of the day, that is India's leading in the world in terms of the digital revolutions. This is what the Prime Minister has said while addressing the Digital India Week. Important for general studies paper two under the topic government policies and intervention in the various sector and issues arising from it design and implementations. So recently while addressing the Digital India Week, the Prime Minister of India has said that India is a guiding for the fourth industrial revolution as per the government program which made technology accessible, improve service and encourage the start. Right. Although we have seen the revolution journey in terms of industrial revolution, it has evolved a lot and the technology participation is evident at this point of time. So something brief about Digital India program. Digital India is a flagship program by the government of India with the visions to transform India into digitally empowered society and knowledge economy. When way back when government started this Digital India program, it has helped the digitalization both at the center level and at the state level also. And Digital India program started eight years ago, shows how technology can be used for the progress, right? For any certifications, for any filing, everything has been made digital. Almost in the government of India and most of the state government are working on a digital platform. And looking into India's digital revolution roadmap, so the Prime Minister has said that India want to become a cheap maker from a cheap taker. We are importing a lot of cheap from other countries. Now the Prime Minister is of the vision that India should make it a Atmanirbhar and the domestic manufacturing of chip making should be more encouraged. Investment and capacity increasing in India to increase the production of semiconductor also. Government has also come up with a PLI scheme, production line incentive scheme. That is again helping many sector, specifically some of the sectors like semiconductor and chip making. If you're writing in mains paper, make sure you highlight this. The government scaling, upskilling and reskilling at least 14 lakh of the people for the next five years to support 30 institutional under chip to start a program. Right. So this is another thing of you know, getting a scaling done to the mass of the people. Space, mapping, drone, gaming, animations are some of the things that are going to expand in India and definitely will contribute to the Indian economy. The government is working on a digital map for the rural property using the drones. So drones is also helping apart from surveillance, it is also helping government in mapping and also to the farmers as well. Now this is how actually the thing has evolved. Uh, we are in the fourth revolution at present. Industrial revolutions ki baat kare. We are at the fourth now. It started at fourth revolution. The first revolution thi pe mechanization, steam or water power pe zyada dhyan di ki. Dusre revolution jo industrial revolutions thi, usme mass productions and ER. For third IR, that is the industrial revolution, it was electronic, IT system and automations. And at present, which is at the fourth industrial revolution, we are more focused upon cyber, physical system, state of art technology. AI, machine learning and all these things. 
Now, this is a graph uh, which will help you understand about the job from the automation sector, which is also under the threat. So if you see globally, the number of workers displaced is 15%. For Japan, it is 26%. For Germany, it is 24%. United States, 23%. China, 16%. And India, at 9%. Now, some important government scheme or initiative that is inclined towards chasing the fullest of India's industrial potential in India, which are industrial revolutions, unko achieve karne ke liye government ne kya kya se schemes lai hai. This all schemes or initiative is again important for your prelims. And if you are writing in mains paper, make sure you take a note of this. So, Digital India Bhajni is a new initiative which will enable easy access to internet and digital services in Indian languages including voice based access that will help creation for the content in indian languages the other important program hai, that is digital india genesis which is also known as next gen support for innovation startup is a platform to discover support grow and make successful startup in tier 2 and tier 3 cities of india and the total outlook rakhi gayi hai is particular initiatively that is for 750 crore rupees now, my scheme is a service delivery platform which will facilitate the government scheme. Here, yeah, C2S program, consumer to service program aims to train the manpower in semiconductor chip designing, right? So, this is something which will help to get the semiconductor you know, excellence for India by providing a service delivery platform. So what are the advantages of India's digital revolutions? Digital India has brought government to a doorstep and phones of the citizen. Basically, jitne bhi app-based applications hain, ya fir government ki jo bhi important schemes hain, that is there in the app-based. You can register, you can even file a complaint, ya koi bhi certifications aapko karni hai, aaj kal app-based ya government ki portal pe ja pe kar sakte hain. So this is the advantage which has you know, empowered the citizen to make your complaint or address the grievances digitally. Similarly, documents for the rural properties are provided using technology. Service like certificates, reservations, banking has become accessible and affordable. To DBT, direct benefit transfers. More than 23 crore rupees has been directly transferred to the bank account for the beneficiary for past eight years since the inception of Digital India program. Now, the Prime Minister said that Digital India has assisted to fight the COVID-19. The registrations of COVID-19 vaccinations are in digital platform. COVID app, you have use kya hoga? COVID is app where you have basically registered yourself to get the vaccination of the both doses. So this is again, it has helped. Without it is not possible. It would have a chaotic to make a line and again get the registration done. So app ke thui sari asan hui. With the help of One Nation, One Ration Card, it has ensured free ration to more than 80 crore citizens of our country. Now the other news, government orders no service charges by default by the restaurants and the hotels. Important for general studies paper 3, that is Indian economy and issues related to planning, mobilization, resource growth and development. So in a major decision, the Center Consumer Protection Authority, also known as CCPA, double CPA you can call it, so they have barred the hotel and restaurant from levying any kind of service charges by default in the food item. If they wish to, they have to voluntarily make it clear that we are charging and the customer will have the discretion to pay it or not. So it allows the customers to file a complaint in case of any violation of the norms that is put up by the Center Consumer Protection Authority. Now CCP has said that there should not be any collection of the service charges by any other name. Kisi or naam se aap is cheez ko charge nahi kar sakte ye categorically jo central consumer protection authority unhone kaha hai. The hotel will have to clearly inform the consumer that they are paying the service charges and it has the consumer discretion. Jo customers hain unke discretion pe hongi. Now the central consumer protection authority also said that the service charges cannot be collected by adding along the food bill, leaving GST or the total amount. There will be no gimmick and no other extra charges. Now, what is the provision in the complaint? Basically, the government has also come up with the complaint procedures to address the grievances. So, the guideline empower the consumer to complaints against the practice under the provisions of the Consumer Protection Act, tagging it as an unfair and trade practice and the violation of 
consumer right. As per the guideline of the Central Consumer Protection Authority, legal action can be initiated with with uh, for the restaurant whom the complaint has been raised. If any individual is restaurant or hotel, a complaint is raised, then it will be a conclusive action stage so that these are not repeated. Under the new Consumer Protection Act, it is empowered to take the action under the relevant portion of the law. Now moving to the other news, that is center step to tackle rupees volatility, something important for general studies paper too. Government policies and intervention for the development of various sectors and issues arising from it, design and implementation. This is again important for general studies paper 3, where Indian economy is concerned. So according to the senior government official, India is trying to address the rupees volatility which we have seen and it has stumbled down to the record low against the dollar in the recent week. This is also because of the US Fed's decision. The US Fed has made important decisions in the monetary policy. Ko dekhte hai. So this is something which is impacting India also. Now the current situation concerning is the widening trade deficit, that is the current account deficit, which is sell-off of the foreign investors. Now rupees plunged to 6% against the dollar this year weighting down by the broad strength in the green pack and investor retracted the domestic market share. Boss are as investors, they angel investors, they, they have you know, they taken away their money or as for this way, you have seen the stock markets and mutual funds ke market are not very much outperforming and there is a lot of deterioration and the values that are shared are not very much. Now, anticipating on the rupees value, the government is coming up around with the view that India's currency would be weakened to 80 to a dollar over the next few weeks, despite the central bank interventions to support the rupee. Now, recently, the government and the RBI have reported to discuss the rupees depreciation, right? We have seen that government and RBI is taking the conclusive action, but this is expected that the rupees ki jo value hai, wo aur zyada deteriorate ho sakti hai. Now, factors that are mostly affecting the price, the value of the rupee. So, the rupee has been under pressure since Russia has invaded Ukraine February 2022. When Russia has invaded Ukraine, the crude oil prices have been increased and consequential effect of the rupee's depreciation has been increased. Now, which fan varies around the high crude oil commodities, which boosting the dollar slowing against the economic growth. Now, a news by Mint has reported that RBI Deputy Governor uh, Michael Pathra said that the central bank is intervening in the market, defending upon the rupees against any shower volatility. Although the conclusive actions or the concrete action is taken by RBI, but we have to wait with the market volatility as well. Something is not under direct control of the RBI as well. Now, the other news center committed to the fiscal deficit target of 6.4%, something important for general studies paper 3 under the topic. Indian economy and issues related to planning, mobilization, resource, growth and development. So according to the center, it is committed to stick to the fiscal deficit target of 6.4% despite the strong global headwind. So make sure you remember this data until we have our current data. So government ne kaha ki 6.4% takki fiscal deficit ki target rakhi jai. The Ministry of Finance is confident of achieving the target to set up at the start of the fiscal. And ministry noted that the current account deficit, which is CAD, to be higher if crude oil prices surge. I have discussed this earlier that there is a consequential effect of crude oil ke global prices and our current account deficit is widening. Now, global oil prices, so the global oil price has been boiled since the So, the global oil price has been boiled since the eruptions of the military conflict between the Russia and Ukraine, and this has resulted in the Western sanction imposed on the country. Right? So, Russia has basically imposed the US has also sanctions and there are many countries that have oil in Russia. The price soared up up to 120 per barrel that has reduced relatively since then and if we talk about Brent crude, this is triple 1.27 barrel per dollar. Now, the oil prices and the inflation in India, how the consequences and the Effect is there for the oil prices. The increase in the crude oil combined with the surge of the other commodity prices has led to the inflationary pressure across the world. And in India, the retail inflation has complied 
to 7.4 percent in may which was followed by the reserve bank of india decision to raise the short term rate that is 50 basic points se badhai hai rupee ne which is 4.90 at the monetary policy committee meeting right which was again a surprise for many of the expert and stakeholders now the government is taking steps to deal with the spiraling crude oil prices in the international market india imposed 85% of its crude oil requirement and the weaker rupees market has again costed higher so this is the reason being jo current account deficit hai wo widen ho rahi hai and even to larger extent the value of rupees depreciating now moving to the editorial of the day that is the problem with our university vision this is something important for general studies paper 2 under the topic issues related to development and management of education and human resources this editorial is written by milind kumar sharma he is basically the faculty at university of jodhpur and his views are personal now what are the things that i'm going to discuss under this editorial so basically components of the qs world university ranking indian university performance step motherly treatment and the nep vision so the entire editorial focuses upon the challenges of indian university visions and how the things would be executed to ensure that we are having a quality education globally so it has now become an annual ritual for all india to discuss the international ranking for the higher education institutions when the global ranking system like qs world ranking university ranking is announced so writer wanted to convey unhone ye kehna chahte hain ki jis tarah se jab global ranking aati hai us time pe hi discussion hoti hai ki hamare जो हायर एजुकेशनल इंस्टीट्यूशन है उनकी क्या परफॉर्मेंस है जो गवर्नमेंट ने एक्चुअली एड किया है जो क्वालिटी इंप्रूवमेंट हो रही है वो वाकई में हो पा रही है या नहीं हो पा रही है दिस कंपैरिजन इज ओनली व्हेन वी हैव अ क्यूएस वर्ल्ड रैंकिंग सो द पॉइंट इज दैट द राइटर वॉन्ट टू कन्वे दैट वी नीड टू वर्क इन हॉलिस्टिक वे दैट जब नेक्स्ट रैंकिंग आए तो हमारी परफॉर्मेंस और अच्छे से इंप्रूव हो और ना सिर्फ इस पर डिस्कशन हो so what is the component of qs world university ranking although i have discussed this news when the ranking was released i think most of you must be aware of the qs world ranking so qs world ranking for the higher educational institutions rank the university on the following components first is have the academic reputations which comprises of 40% then the employer reputation which comprises 10% faculty student ratio which is 20% citation per faculty which is again 20% international faculty ratio which is again 5% and international student ratio at 5% the international research network and employment outcome were 10% for this editions right now the indian university performance an indian university among the top 1000 globally university has risen to 27 from last 22 years now the indian university of science bangalore have moved to 31 place to emerge the highest ranking indian institution for 2023 editions and there's no serious debate of abysmal performance of the indian universities bearing the institutions of eminence right so this is how it is helping and indian institutions occupy a special place as they granted more academic and administrative autonomy to the additional funding therefore their dominance in the top 500 qs university ranking comes to no surprise now these are some of the universities ranking that you can check it out like uh, for the other universities in india iit bombay is 177 delhi 185 bangalore as 186 madras 225 so these are the ranking you can pause this video and you can check out the details now step motherly treatment as a part of survey Uh, for like 184 of the higher institution they are centrally these are the centrally funded universities and the indian government generously allocate resources to this institution however the final support provided by the state government to the higher education universities right so state is sponsor jitni bhi universities hai they are unable to manage the pay salaries and pension so financial crunch ki wajah se bhi kafi zyada problem hai and more or less it is a management which is not taking place at the right time now while the number of university increase almost 35% the other number that is the institutions are generously funded by the center performance better than post standard the academic performance indicators faculty strength modernization laboratories building infrastructure digitalized library sponsored 
research project and computing facilities are something which have to be taken into consideration. Now looking into the new education policy vision, the national education policy or new education policy 2020 has envisioned that all higher educational institutions to become a multidisciplinary institution by 2040. This is a vision that was set in the new education policy and it aims to increase the gross enrollment ratio also known as GER in the higher education including the vocational education from 26% in 2018 to 50% in 2023. Now the NEP has also aims to ensure that by 2030 there is at least one large multidisciplinary higher educational institution in or near every district. So every district may koshi shi ki jai ki ki higher educational institution ko establish kiya jai. The plan of the NEP is multidisciplinary education and research university that are also being completed in order to achieve the highest global standard in the quality education. Now the need of the R is to build and develop our higher education while to take into account the conditions as per the market demand. So definitely it is a time for a country like India to endeavor and build an education system which is robust in nature, which is holistic in nature and imparting high quality education to our students, right? Although competing from many developed countries, India is still lacking behind in many of the parameters. So the essential requirement from the government both by the center and the state is to ensure the quality improvement in the education sector. This is how you can conclude your answer with a way forward. Now moving to the MCQ questions of the day before I proceed just to tell you the answers of yesterday questions. For first question the correct option is C. For second question also the correct option is C. Today's MCQ of practice. Malabar exercise is an annual trilector Navy exercise of India, Japan and United States of America. The exercise is held natively in India and Pacific Ocean. So do check it out for the correct option. Now the other is Gender Inequality Index is released by World Economic Forum, United Nations Development Program, Save the Children and Transparency International. So you have to check out for the correct option which among the following is a correct. This was all about for the daily news and editorial analysis followed by the MCQ questions. If you have any other concern, you can let me know. I'll be more than happy to assist you. For time being, I'm signing off. Thank you so much for watching this video.